The challenges posed by climate change require us to really transform our economies. Uh, we need to, to do that as fast as possible given the, the urgency of the climate challenges. And so innovation is essential to transformation. And uh, as I say, it's not just about hardware, but it's also but very much about the software, if you like, the policy, the know-how uh, on with regards to the types of policy, with regards to what type of financing instruments may be most useful. One of the hardest things for me is hearing the investment community say, we don't know how to invest in energy efficiency. Uh, there are a lot of specialized financial institutions that have developed strategies and approaches for funding building energy efficiency. Um, it may not be a prime commercial market today, but there are pockets of innovation. And certainly if you look at the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, EBRD, they have programs that integrate in energy efficiency into other lending so that you're interested in expanding your manufacturing and here are the seven technologies that will help make that more efficient. Um, or you look at something like a Citibank, which has put together its wheel program, which is a warehousing vehicle to aggregate up the, each mortgage, mortgages, um, to help bundle those so that they can be investable from the financial markets. So overcoming some of these challenges to the financing is really critical. The most economically efficient instrument is to have a carbon tax. You know, you pay for what you are actually responsible for, you know, you're not taxed for something you don't consume, you're taxed for what you consume or what you use. But I think um, markets are probably a more powerful tool or, or more politically powerful tool. The biggest thing happening in markets these days is that China will be launching its national carbon market in 2017. Mm -hmm. And I think that will have some trickle-down effect, especially if they're looking to connect their market with other countries. Um, it will create an incentive you know, to, to have markets, to have tools, to have offset projects that will be able to, to link and maybe to, send, to um, sell into the Chinese market. I think there is not nearly enough discussion about the potential for land use investment to generate huge climate benefits quickly and to do so in ways that are very beneficial for all of, almost all of the sustainable development goals. We need to be thinking about shifting tens of millions of hectares of land from net sources of greenhouse gases to net sinks of greenhouse gases. And we can't actually even do that in any other sector. There's no other sector where we have the opportunity for large-scale sequestration with existing technology with enormous co-benefits for the poor and for, for everyone else as well. But actually over the last decade, there have been a, there's been a lot of really excellent experience with how climate-related finance can come into these land use situations, which is quite different from the energy situation. But in the case of land use, you don't need to pay for the whole thing. You only need to pay for the catalytic transitional investments from this carbon finance. And with a very small amount of resources, you can generate a real shift in the trajectory of how the agricultural development, the livestock development, grazing land, the forest land is happening. So I think th those would be sort of the two messages, to be more creative on finance and to put those, those, um, that, that land use sector uh, at the fore.